followers. We've got Chromie Squiggles sitting at the top. We've got Art Gobblers number two, but yeah. they're trending downwards. And I think that that's really important for people to understand, uh, even on OpenSea or anywhere where you see the most volume, don't think just because they're number four that they're going to be going up. Yeah. When a project's dumping, it trends also because there's a lot of volume being traded, but the wrong way. And that's what's happening at the moment with Arc Gobblers. We've seen them at 8.66. Mm -hmm. um, they were sitting at about 15 ETH yesterday, and they were sitting at about 20 ETH the day before. And yeah. um, what's happened here, Cade, is there has been some allegations against the founder um, about oh. a child pornography Oh, I did hear about stuff. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to put it uh, sensitively. It re it reminds me a little bit of the Jungle Freaks mm -hmm. uh, situation. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, so uh, it, another thing that happened is Andrew Wang apparently was um, pretending to be a 13 year old artist in the space yeah, on Twitter. Dude, what the and fuck he, was that? And like, he was, was talking that? with the founder of our gobblers. And the founder started asking him all explicit tweets and, you know, let me gobble over you and, and a lot of really horrible stuff. But he thought he was a 13-year-old. So, look, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't know. This is like everyday changes. That's why if you've got an opportunity to make great profit, you should you should sell it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know the extent of the truth behind the allegations, um, but Andrew Wang, I do know, is quite notable in the space, and I don't think he would, you know, make things up. Um, but you never know anything. All I know is that the, the this is trending downwards at the moment, um, and um, I think if this, this stuff is true, um, then this will eventually die out to absolutely nothing. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, so like I said, I've, I've been focused on the business the last couple of days. So I've been as active on Twitter. I just, I've been active enough to know that there was some drama. All I saw on Twitter's timeline yesterday was just, they were like, oh my God, like, I hate this. I hate that. Like, why is the space so negative? And I was like, kind of confused what was going on. Uh, and then in relation to art gobblers, I want to draw attention to Rugrats. I'm sure Philip, you remember that project. Remember um, when they dropped and everyone was really excited because they like had some value the first few days. We we're like, holy shit. Like, I can't believe they pulled it off. What a what a dub. And then they crashed. And Art Gobblers has already cut in half. You know, and it's like, whoa, that was fast, bro. And I think it's because of that. It's su it's such high speculation with such a big promise of rewards that don't make any sense that it just sounds too good to be true. And in this kind of market, I just don't think we have the capacity to like pull that off, you know, versus in a bull run. Too good to be true is almost always gonna happen, right? Like everything you you hope could happen like literally has a chance versus now uh, you know I've, i i think i'm like one for six on mints that even have gone up a fraction since the since mint day which you know isn't the best way to to judge if a, if a project's doing well but it's kind of a decent way to measure like interest and demand in the project and i don't know man i'm not sure what what do you think about our colors like what, do you, what is your prediction for the next few weeks look i think this throws a spanner into the works um, you know, the, these new um, allegations. Um, if true, I think it could be a very big problem for them because Julian is really the face behind the project. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you don't want FUD at the stage. Before this FUD um, or this, you know, truth, I really don't know. Before all of this, I, I was really quite bullish on them. You know, they've got a huge uh, venture backing. And um, the way they're laying out the collection is slowly. So, yes, you will get to 10,000, but you need 50 goop to get more goops, mm -hmm. uh, to get more gobblers. It takes a long time to get 50 goops. So you sort of ensure that it's that it's rolled out slowly. You can show the art in the tummies of the, of the gobblers, yep. um, which I think is also quite cool and new and if you get the right collabs on on board with that and have like really big artists art in in the in the stomachs mm -hmm. um that that could really have you know a, a double triple floor price sales on a consistent basis which is always good for a collection as well right so i so i was really bullish on them um across the board i mean i did that video seven eight weeks ago um, which has actually blown up in the last uh, three days. Yeah, dude, the art I saw. Gobblers review. Yeah, 
because, but, but you know, we even the notes there say like this could be one to watch, um, and that you know when we saw what happened when other projects got uh, venture funding of this amount, they were at a fifteen e floor. That's mm -hmm. what my description says, and these guys were at a fifteen e floor. Um, so yeah, well, I was really really bullish. Um, I don't like the allegations. If they are true, then I don't think anyone should support this project. Um, but again, I, I haven't. Look, I'm not judge and jury, so I haven't looked at it enough to be able to say, you know, yes or no, this is what happened for sure. It's all hearsay at the moment. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the art, I mean, like, uh, I covered it on my channel as well, uh, I think yesterday, the day before, on a, on a live stream, and kind of broke it down, what was important through my, uh, it was a tea time episode, um, solo, and I kind of broke it down. The art thing was interesting, because if it, it's, it's like the thing, like, everything that they had laid out as far as, like, how the ecosystem would work works if people like adopt it if the market says okay this is lit we like it but if people don't care about it and the floor starts going down and people lose interest and then it just becomes another thing that happened then it pretty much is just gonna be fucking like uh, useless again just like every other project yeah. so i think i think the space as you know kate like it's already got a short attention span and then if you throw like proper serious allegations into the mix and as you say, people people like you know lose interest. Then then it's done before it started. I do think that I'm always hesitant and uh, you know a, a bit concerned when when there's tokens involved, um, because we know you and I, bro, we know what happens when when there's a token. Everyone gets paid for the first couple of weeks, yeah. amazingly, and then it just it, it's just not sustainable, you know. But mm -hmm. I mean, you can just see here how the volume has just died. Yeah. I mean, these dots represent Crazy. sales. It's just literally died. Like, like no one wants to buy. And that mm. is why you've got the floor price dropping. Because, you know, people are wanting to get out, but no one no one is really wanting to get in. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And there's another interesting is. thing. Offers versus listings. You're seeing more listings than offers at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, definitely short term, we can see the trajectory is going down. I mean, even this chart is predicting yep. it over here. Um, it remains to be seen what happens long term. But even before the allegations, 20 ETH was not sustainable. I mean, I, I did that interview with Kosha on Wednesday. You were there. Thank you so much for helping with the camera. Um, <laughs> and um, I said to him, sell. That was when it was 20. He had he said, one? I'm not sure what to do. I said to him, sell. Oh, I'm not sure, but I'm just saying, like, like even before the allegations came out, yeah, it, it was obvious. And I think we even spoke about it. I don't know if it was you and me who spoke about it, but Can't it was remember. just obvious that it was not sustainable, you know. Um, and now you compound that with these serious allegations. Um, what do you think they'd be at yes. without it, without the allegations? Like, I think they'd be about 12, 13. Do you think it would have you know, crashed? Though, like, why, why, why is it not sustainable? Why did, why did Moonbirds succeed, but not Rick and Morty? Well, Moonbirds didn't. Moonbirds was on 30 ETH, and you can now pick them up for 8.5 Ethereum. Well, yeah, but that's months later. Like, when it was happening, they went from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40. Yeah, so when I 35. say sustainable, I say, I say that the 15, 20 ETH floor is not is not sustainable. Yeah. Um, you know, so you look no, at No, I agree. I mean, I agree. I'm just trying to figure out, like, what it was about Moonbirds that got, like, I don't know what the difference was, why, why it was able to shoot to 40 ETH and continue climbing. Um, before they dropped their little there, handbag there purse you, and crushed their brand. There you had, uh, there you had Kevin Rose, um, who has this is Rick and Morty, space. bro. What do you mean, Rick and Morty? No, no, no. Like... But Kevin, Kevin Rose is, is a Web three native. Yeah, that's he true, also that's has, true. You know, he he also has um, that podcast, um, which is you know he's been in the space and he's very connected. Um, also, the venture uh, funding which you have on both of them, but he also has. Um, the main collection, the Proof Collective, um, which mm. was sitting at 100 sure. ETH. Um, so he had a lot more on the Web3 going for him, whereas Julian has a lot more in Web2 going for him, right? Mm -hmm. um, what else he has going for him is that the art meta is pumping. I love this website. True. The art, yeah, the me art meta, meta is pumping at the moment. Um, and you can even draw your own ones and put it in this in the tummy. And I whatever. like that. I like the drawing part. Like if I ever do a collection, like I think I've told you before on the channel, I want to do like a PFP soulbound token thing attached to my access key NFTs. And for that, like I want to have a really cool avatar and I would like to have ideally some type of customization. Like I'm hoping by the time I do it, 
they uh, it's like somewhat easy for me to manually do this on my own but like make an nft have like the general framework of it created but then let whoever's going to mint that nft or um be rocking the nft to be able to alter it a little bit and kind of have yeah. a little bit of customization because i want to have like the the basic thing down so it's not totally different from everyone but when you get your access key i don't want you to have to be forced to use the pfp that's attached to it if you didn't like that pfp and because the person who made it before uh, has a different taste than you and i want to be able to just have those nfts and people will be able to pick them out and be like damn like you got one of those it's kind of like with utes like right now like people are seeing the um the revealed utes and everyone's like holy shit like i mean i've seen positive sentiments so far i think they're really cool um and i just want it to be like something when they when they see it you're like holy shit you got one of those pfps that's really really cool it's really exclusive um and so yeah yeah for sure i get it i think it's i, I think there's a lot of cool concepts here that um that we haven't seen before um uh, but again the fud is serious bro very yeah, very serious true. i mean like, like that's fucked you know, bro that's some fucked up that's some fu Peter, it's like probably the worst. is not great <laughs> you know what i mean i mean it's like rape's not great murder's not great pedophilia is not great you know what i mean yeah. it's like up there with with all of that i see yeah. kevin saying over here this is crap 15 to 8 ETH in a day. Yeah, so that's what people have to understand. Um, any new project, no matter how notable the, the founder or whatever it may be as far as in the Web2 world, has got that risk in the beginning. And unless it's been around for a good couple months and been battle tested in the NFT space, you've got that risk. And I, I learned my story, I, I learned my lesson with Jungle Freaks. So I was involved there. I, I Jungle Freaks was by the... Um, the guy who did uh, Larry, who did the Hustler magazine cartoons. So very Larry Flint, I think. I don't know. Um, and, and so a very notable guy um, came out with a cool collection. Everyone was talking about them sitting at a couple of ETH. Um, and uh, I bought in at the top. I was new to NFTs. I wanted to be a part of it. And then allegations, not allegations, Bella, but uh, uh, comics came out of him drawing racist stuff and things like that. And and the floor died. Like uh, yes, so it, why, it, it why didn't you watch couple... my YouTube video? Remember that I made a video breaking it down the week before it happened, and I said I don't know about this guy. 